Some models have forecast that a changing climate will result in New Zealand's horticultural areas becoming drier and more changeable due to an increase in the frequency of northwest wind flows across the country. Lincoln University postgraduate fellow Dr Marco Giacometti is creating different climates and vineyards to study the effects of pests and diseases under those conditions. There's quite a bit of concern in agriculture when climate change is predicted and that's probably going to make pest numbers and pest outbreaks fluctuate a lot. So the temperature increases that I'm trying to achieve are around a two to three um, degree increase in average temperature over the day or a a four to six degree increase during the daytime temperatures where climate change is expected to, to have the most effect. This climate chamber is made out of a mesh. It's a quarantine mesh which will not allow the insects to come out. It's got a plastic cover that goes over the top of it um, and a section that goes over the top um, which is plastic as well and that allows the, uh, the, the, the greenhouse effect to happen. And there are also two sections in the top which are also just made out of this mesh and that will allow some of that excess heat to get away because we don't want it to get 40 degrees in there. At the moment there are, there's no vine under here because I'm just testing the prototype but later on there will be um, a vine in here. You can see that I have um, two data loggers. This one here just measures temperature and this one here measures temperature and humidity. So once I've got this prototype working correctly, then we'll be able to mass produce these and get them over the top of the grapevines. Viticulture has been one of the areas that's really embraced sustainability. The mulches that I'm using and the cover crops that I'm using really help viticulture to move away from pesticides and residues and a lot of the social problems that chemical use has created. The light brown apple moth, which is one of the insects that I'm working on in this project, it facilitates botrytis bunch rot by um, damaging the, the berries. I'm wanting to introduce a predator and a parasitoid that may be able to control the light brown apple moth. One is earwigs, which are a, um, a generalist predator and also it's an, it's an omnivore, it also eats plant material. One of my questions, whether the earwigs will eat vines or not, I've talked to many viticulturalists, none of them see them as pests other than levels of uh, sort of like a contaminant when they are harvesting their crops that you get a lot of earwigs in, in the crop. Uh, the other insect that I'm working on is a parasitoid wasp and that uh, parasitises the, the light brown apple moth and uh, some of the, the floral resources, the, the intero crops that I'm wanting to use, uh, should be able to um, boost those, the, the numbers of that parasitoid. Buckwheat and phacelia are two uh, different plants that I was want, wanting to consider the use of. They pl provide an excellent uh, floral resource for the parasitoid. Um, that uh, has been shown in previous work that they can increase the levels of parasitism by around three to four times and uh, reduce the, uh, the levels of the light brown apple moth by about five to six times. One of the beauties of the areas that I work in, which is conservation biological control where you alter the environment in some way, is that you're not actually introducing anything to the environment. You provide a resource for them so that, that their population numbers can grow, but then if it's not working or you want to dimin diminish that effect, you just remove a mulch or you remove a shelter and then those populations will drop back very quickly to to standard levels, so um, it's, it's generally seen as a very low risk uh, method. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.